though the Second World War brought an end to the terrifying Nazi regime, an even greater threat emerged. America unleashed upon the earth a weapon so deadly it would cripple the world in fear for generations to come. Japan felt the wrath of atomic energy as tens of thousands were vaporised by nuclear bombs. Other countries looked on and shuddered as the after effects of nuclear war were made clear. Obliterated cities, a vanished populace and thousands suffering from the devastating effect of radiation poisoning. It would seem that America would emerge as the dominant superpower of the world. They now had the power to vanquish cities at the touch of a button. However, the war had awoken a sleeping giant. Communist Russia had used their vast landscape and huge population to quickly weaponize the country. The cheap labor of communism allowed them to become a manufacturing powerhouse and they were soon vying for global supremacy. Winston Churchill predicted that Russia would become the greatest threat to Western democracy and wanted to continue the fight against Russia. However, the world grew weary of war and a stalemate would commence which still continues today. It was in fact only four years after America used the atomic weapon that Russia detonated their own. According to Smithsonian Magazine, a network of Russian spies and traitors from the UK and USA leaked the technology to Stalin. Though it was immediately after the war that troubles arose between the two nations. Germany had seen a meteoric rise in armament and technology during the war, and arguably only lost because they overstretched themselves. Both Russia and America were desperate for this technology. According to Esquire, the US launched a shameful project known as Operation Paperclip. They would enlist Germany's top scientists from the war, many of which had committed horrendous atrocities. In exchange for their cooperation, they were given immunity from prosecution. One of the most infamous examples was Werner Van Braun. He was one of the architects who helped America win the space race. In recognition, he was awarded a National Medal of Science in 1977. This was despite his past life as a member of the SS. He was an active participant of slave labour in Germany. Whilst researching rockets during the war, he personally visited Buchenwald and hand-picked slaves to help him. He also engineered the V-2 rocket which devastated Britain during the war. Leading the German research was Werner von Braun, a scientist whose passion about space exploration was exploited by the Nazis. Years later, von Braun would work for NASA on the Apollo missions, but now his focus was on London. Arthur Rudolph also worked with both NASA and the US Army to develop the rockets which sent Neil Armstrong to the moon. He was later outed as a war criminal and he fled to West Germany in 1984. Hubertus Strughold was another scientist used by NASA and the US Air Force. He helped improve nuclear technology and space exploration. Strughold had previously worked at Dachau, performing human experiments that were often fatal. This is just a small example of the German scientists that were brought to the US after the war. According to History.com, 1,600 scientists were recruited, many of which were war criminals. 
This leaves us with a moral conundrum. Should America and other countries like the UK and France have taken Nazi scientists? The moral and ethical answer would be no, but considering Russia would have taken them anyway, it becomes a matter of national security. This is a philosophical question you should ask yourself. Please leave a comment below with your answers.